Um, how has the focus of the producers that you invite to come along here, how has it changed? Have you diversified with the type of product that they're bringing or they're... No, if anything, I've probably tried to relax a little bit. You tend to get a bit excited, like certainly in the first instance, we're trying to cram too much into each session. Yeah. So we'd sort of have a you know a wonderful meat producer, a fish producer, a great seafood guy, maybe some cheese or a fruit or something. Um, we'd have a beautiful wine guide and we might have a boutique bear. Yeah. Sort of so you just try to cram so much into it because yeah. being a chef and amazing produce, you sort of tend to get quite excited about it all. Um, so we've just tried to streamline things a little bit and to stick. I suppose we've developed the formula a lot more. The actual focus of a day hasn't really changed that much. It's still sort of you know, all, I mean, the main reason for it is it's all about the producer. Yeah. It gives them a stage to talk on and to ask, you know, for the public to ask questions, for the media to ask questions, and um, the media to pick up different hooks from it and that sort of stuff. So that focus has stayed pretty much the same. You know, to complement that, we've tried to give the food justice, I suppose, by introducing different techniques, showcasing it in a way that makes the producer feel proud of their product yeah. um, and it, highlighting the versatility of the different products as well so that's sort of been a common thread throughout so but now the formula will, will generally stick to one beverage producer whether it's wine or beer or whatever and then um, and then three producers generally a cross section whether it be some from the dairy or the paddock and, and, um, and the meat one and the, and the fish guy as well just sort of so we can get a balanced menu basically. Yeah. Different articles being written. Or yeah, absolutely. I think people are starting to understand a little bit more. Yeah. And <clears throat> especially with new products, things like the Mulloway was quite new when we did the cocoa chocolate a little while ago. They got loads of mileage from it. And, yeah. Um, you know, and it's, and it's hard because it's sort of if his story's written a few weeks before, then they can't really sort of do similar stories for a long time. So a lot of it's got to do with timing. But um, I think it's been a good avenue. For media, well, I hope it's been a good avenue for the media to for them to not, not only stay in touch of what's going on, but also sort of give, I suppose, a bit of recognition to guys like John Meredith, who's been doing what he's been doing for 36 years, which yeah. is an amazing feat from by Australian standards. But you put that feat in, in Europe, and you know you're talking generations, hundreds of years that they would be doing it for. So yeah. sort of you know yeah. Australia is so young in that in that culture, but I think. You know, it's not a publicity thing for us. It's we try and put us on the back and the producers at the front and keep it purely about them. And the more people come, people start twittering, writing blogs, that sort of stuff. So we get food bloggers as well to try and expose it and, and get you know good support and following for it. So sure. yeah, which just certainly builds up. I think each time just gets stronger and stronger. Absolutely.